I used my hard earned money to buy this. So y'all don't have to. And well... See, people lie, cheat, steal. Disappoint. Uh, yeah, they're hypocrites. You know, they tell you what they think you want to hear. Now, I don't fall into that category. All right, so boom, walk on, bro, bro, bro. Welcome back to another installment of Edutainment. We finna review Bandman Kevo's OnlyFans. Kevo is an ex scammer turned finance guru who has a secret sauce to help you make passive income online. But he's most popular for his content around credit, with his video titled How to Finesse the Credit Bureau as an 800 plus credit score, which damn near has a million views. This is the first guru course or program that I'm buying after graduating from Scam Rehab. You know, no biggie. No, once upon a time, I bought a $2,000 Amazon FBA Make Money Online course and ended up in $12,000 of credit card debt. It's tough. Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? Huh? Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? Huh? I don't understand why you even did this to yourself. This made you look so fucking stupid. This shit make you look so stupid. We finna look at two things. One, whether the information can already be found for free online or at a more feasible and affordable cost or price. And two, if the information is actually accurate when seeking to increase your credit score or make money with the methods he teaches. Now, Kevo does have a history of scamming. And even in the interview on Say Cheese TV, he mentions how he seeks to emulate Hush Puppy success. Looking up to Hush Puppy for a minute though, like I'm like, damn, this dude, he, he the goat, like, this is why, if I want to be like anybody, I want to be like him, you feel me? Yeah. Who, ironically enough, recently got arrested for fraud a couple months ago. So there's that. And all he would ever do is post himself like this, you know, wearing clothes, getting having really nice cars. People got very jealous of him. They wanted to know, who is this guy? Uh, it opened a lot of doors for him, and people thought he was legit. That was, until he got charged for, oops, DOJ. Nigerian National brought the U.S. to face charges of conspiring to launder hundreds of millions of dollars from cybercrime schemes. Now, Kevro could be like former NBA player Anton Walker, who is now a financial advisor with Morgan Stanley, a wealth management company, despite he himself making over 100 million during his playing career and still going bankrupt. Anton Walker made $110 million over 13 seasons in the NBA. On third down, over the top, the pass is complete for a first down, Adrian Peterson. Right away, picked off. Here comes Eddie Jones behind the back for Latrell Spring. <laughs> Unfortunately, like many other former athletes, Walker lost his millions, and he joins us now to share his story. I guess sometimes the best person to learn from is from a person who did everything you shouldn't have done. So, given that, we'll give Kevo the benefit of the doubt in this review. Let's begin. So, we'll start off with price. Kevo's OnlyFans is maxed out at $50 per month, or my equivalent Canadian is about $64 Canadian. You ain't finna go broke by simply signing up for his OnlyFans. And I actually like this model of payment. Compared to many gurus who promise you can make money online just like them with their three-step formula, if you just buy their three thousand dollar course, free training that I'm giving you an invitation to turn up for the online training and join our completely free training. Where I'm just here to attend our free live class today and register for one of my free trainings that is happening soon. With more than three thousand people from all around the world quit their jobs. And I'm going to show you step by step how my students are earning six and even seven figures working from their laptops from home. In general, when buying online courses or simply with the daily use of your credit card. Be mindful of two dates. The first is the payment due date. This is the date you have to pay your credit card by to avoid interest charges and demonstrate consistent on-time payments to the credit bureaus. And contrary to popular belief, simply paying your credit card on time isn't enough for a high credit score. Well, gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. This leads us to the second important date, the statement closing date. Proper management of a credit card results in maintaining a low credit card balance and limiting your use of it to 20% or lower. Therefore, if you have a $10,000 credit card limit and see your balance above $2,000, simply pay it off or pay it down to maybe $500 before using your credit card again. If you're managing your credit card well, 
you should essentially be paying it off every two weeks or so. Now, listen to this part. Listen very attentively. All of your credit card activity throughout the month isn't reported. Rather, what reports to credit bureaus is the amount accumulated by the statement closing date. My statement closing date is usually the 12th of each month. Just call your bank, ask them when's the statement closing date, if you are still confused, and they'll tell you. Therefore, if your statement closing date is the 12th like mine, you wanna pay off the balance or pay it off under 20% by the 10th or 9th of each month. But some of y'all need a visual, so I'm gonna let Brody explain the rest. Your credit score depends on a whole bunch of different factors and each one is weighted differently. Your utilization ratio is worth a big chunk right here. 30% of it is your credit score. 35% of it is your payment history. It's if you're on time or not. 15% is your credit age, which is the average age of all your credit lines. 10% is the types of credit you have. So if you have a mortgage, car loans that's paid off, student loans that's paid off, personal loans, self-lending loans, then the more of those you have, the higher percentage you're gonna get here. Another 10% is new credit. So if you have too many new credits, you're gonna start to shrink this 10% down to zero. So if you don't have any new credit for several year, then you're going to get the full points on here. A typical FICO score is out of 850 points. Your utilization ratio is 30% of your score. That means you can get 255 points maximum if you have perfect utilization ratio. Now what's perfect? It's zero utilization ratio. I made up this formula which should roughly track your utilization ratio and the contribution of points to your total credit score. Your utilization ratio points is really 255 times one minus the credit used divided by total credit limit. The credit used is whatever you owe on your credit cards that is reported to the credit bureau right on the statement date. The total credit limit is the total limit across all your credit cards if you have more than one. You can see here if your utilization ratio is zero divided by 1000, one minus that is one times 255, you're gonna get the full points of 255. Now, however, let's say you max out your credit cards and you spent $1,000 out of the total $1,000 limit that you have. So your utilization ratio is gonna be 255 times one minus 1,000 divided by 1,000, which is one right here. So this is zero. And so this whole thing is zero. So you're gonna get zero points out of 255. Then you're gonna get a really low score because 850 minus 255 is roughly 595. That's a really low score. All that game for free 99. That right there is about 65% of your credit score. And then every six months of consistent on-time payments, and while keeping your utilization rate low, simply call up your bank and ask to increase your credit limit by $500. This will not only make it easier to keep your overall utilization rate low by having a higher balance, but also it shows the bank that you can manage higher balance credit cards. <sighs> and understanding these credit principles is important, crucial, as we go further in this review. Two words. Entrepreneurship. Now, as far as posting frequency, Kevo pretty much posts something every single day, such as a highlighted moment from his um, FaceTime or coaching calls. More on that later. And other times, it's just a basic generic screenshot from stuff you can already find on Instagram or Twitter. Like this man will take a screenshot of a stock, right? But then not explain why, why you should buy it or how to buy it. Just says free game, go buy it. Like. I don't understand. Like I said, the graphics and screenshots for the most part are either they don't really give you much information, it's not very specific. Most of the sauce, quote unquote, that you'll find is in the videos. The videos are essentially what make the whole subscription uh, worth it. The main value is in the videos. So for example, he'll talk about um, how to stay protected while using an ATMs, that video right here. Or in another video, he talks about the dangers of buying used cars. Like some people will put um, a mile stopper on their credit on their car that will uh, mislead you into thinking the car has fewer miles when they, when in reality the car will have 30 miles on it but on the mile gauger you may only see 10. So stuff like that, I can see the I can see the benefit of it. And then in the video, I won't tell y'all here, but in the video he explains how to peep game and not get finessed by people who are selling you a used car with a higher mileage. Now, I will say the fact that you're paying monthly for the subscription makes you more likely to check in and see what content he's posted. Whereas a finance channel you follow on YouTube might post something, but you may not see it because of the algorithm or because it's free, right? You don't see the value in watching it immediately. So there's that aspect to it as well. And now we get to the juicy part of this review and Kevo's real money maker. I'm sitting on a bad boy piece of information. Do you understand? A bad boy piece of- On OnlyFans. 
I'm still laughing at it right now. <laughs> but Kevo uh, sporadically promotes his site, kevoconnects.com, right? And he charges, just listen, hear me out, hear me out. He charges $250 for a 10 minute FaceTime. My nigga, you couldn't even do 30 minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like half an hour, I could see, I could maybe see it, but not even half an hour, 10 minutes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shout out season, I know, I know. That ain't it. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that ain't it, bro. That ain't it. Also, you can get 50 credit cleaning letters for $200. And conveniently enough, you need a $600 credit cleaning course to really understand how to use them properly. Properly. And of course, there's no refund policy. All sales are final. You get me? Now, I ain't finna say he's scamming y'all. So I don't doubt you will get the product that you paid for. That's the definition of a scam, not getting what you paid for. But he is definitely finessing out out of your pockets with these prices. When you buy one thing, it can be inexpensive and good quality. And while you buy another thing, it can be inexpensive, but trash quality. While on the other hand, something could be expensive and be overpriced garbage, or maybe just a regular commodity, or be premium quality. Both sides are true. Now I'm gonna talk about some alternatives. If you really wanna go down the DIY, do it yourself approach when it comes to credit repair, you'd be better off spending using that $800 and buying every credit repair book on Amazon. My humble opinion. Where you can get all the dispute letters and credit cleaning templates as well. No book on there about credit repair even touches $100. So. Personally, I would recommend uh, Carolyn Warren's book, Repair Your Credit Like the Pros. The book has over a thousand reviews, but I still maintain a 4.5 star rating. Now that is tough to do. And you can get all the benefits of credit repair for the expensive price of $14. <laughs> yeah, it'd be good for my book. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I'm gonna tickle you again. <laughs> Wouldn't let that shit happen to me though. That second option, you have Mercedes who talks about credit repair, dispute letters, charge-offs, etc. on her Life with MT channel. And she also sells a credit repair DIY kit for the high, high price of $50. Y'all see where I'm going with this, right? The third option is you could very well hire a credit repair company to dispute negative items on your credit report on your behalf. So for example, you have Jason White and his Witness Riches Credit Repair Counseling a Company who charge you about $75 per month to dispute negative derogatory information on your behalf. And they'll dispute upwards of 30 items per month. And if within 90 days of service, nothing has been removed, you get a full refund. Full disclosure for this one, I am a direct affiliate for Jason's Credit Repair Service. I did buy his book full price though, $20, which is where I learned about credit utilization and the specific day that credit bureaus are notified of your credit balance. Now, while on his OnlyFans, there's not much of a community on there. You can't really comment on stuff on posts and bounce ideas back and forth to other people who are subscribed to his OnlyFans. You can't really cross reference to see what he's saying actually works by uh, seeing what other people are commenting. But of course, how would we know when he's blocking anybody and everybody, anybody and everybody, yes, that says anything negative under his posts? August 13, 2020, and I quote, I'm blocking anybody who gets on my post saying something negative about anything I post. Perhaps that's why comments are turned off. IDK, I don't know. So by now, hopefully I've established that there's cheaper alternatives than spending $800 on Kevo's uh, credit cleaning services. Now, we finna get into the nitty gritty of whether his information is actually accurate. Let's begin. Motivated, dedicated, motivated, dedicated. Sorry, his uh, sauce. We'll see whether his sauce information is actually accurate. So, in a post titled, one of the best methods for 2020, he basically says, and I quote, <clears throat> I can't I can't play the video, you know, because uh Kevo is uh 
heavy on the copyright. So let me uh <laughs> narrate it for you. <clears throat> basically, what niggas is doing is they're letting their homie go shop and basically say they ain't do it. Let's say my homie, girl, cousin, or whoever, they use my card and go spend five bands, six bands, two bands of my own money. Basically, they're letting them go spend the bread, then calling their bank and filing a dispute. That way, everything you spend is basically free. You feel me? Free game. End quote. <laughs> so this is essentially chargeback fraud that Kevo is promoting. And this is where the cardholder has ill intent and is likely trying to get away with not paying for a product or a service that they have rightfully ordered or purchased. So the cardholder intent is the critical element here with chargeback fraud. The business may have delivered the product or the service exactly as described and mutually agreed to with the consumer, but the cardholder files a chargeback dispute so that they don't have to actually pay for the item. And oftentimes the chargeback dispute will pass the requirements to file a legitimate chargeback at the time that it was being reported which again is why the chargeback process is slightly in favor of the consumer. You just pretend you didn't get the product or pretend it didn't arrive as described and then you follow the dispute. You know, if you're really cunning, you could then, you know, either keep the product for yourself or now sell it on Kijiji or Craigslist for a profit. That's one way to make money online. Giving away your free book, you just try to sell me stuff. Of course I am. I have no shame, I have no guilt, I have no hesitation. You know, I'm sure Kevin wouldn't mind if, you know, I bought his uh, cleaning letters and credit cleaning course for $800 and, you know, just filed a little dispute. Just a little dispute. Nothing, no biggie, you know? No biggie. I learned from the best. I learned from the best. What's a little chargeback between a mentor and mentee? By the way, chargeback fraud is indeed illegal and can result in jail time if, you know, the bank actually does its due diligence and finds out you are to blame. Besides, there is a limit to how many times you can file a chargeback or a dispute before the bank begins to think you as the fraudster and not the merchants you are buying from. Now, of course, we can't talk about Kevo without mentioning trade lines. Trade lines, trade lines, trade lines. Trade lines, subprime lenders, and primaries. That is his whole, that's part of his brand. So we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta talk about it. Basically, in layman's terms, a trade line is an account that reports payment history to your credit report. A lot of people have the idea of a trade line being an aged or seasoned account, meaning that it has a long history attached to it and you are basically added on to someone else's account as an authorized user. Now there's two different ways to be added to someone's account as an authorized user. Um, there's something called piggybacking where one of your family members or your loved ones adds you to their account and you're considered an authorized user or it's through purchasing trade lines. And what happens is a company or individual will accept fees from you, will add you to someone else's account. And the benefit is they have a long history of positive payments and they also have a large line of credit on the credit report and it's going to help you lower your credit utilization and also add positive payments to your credit report, which in fact does improve your credit score. The thing about these trade lines are a lot of these people are unaware that you're being added to their account and two, it's very costly. This can be a credit card, mortgage, car loan, student loan, et cetera, et cetera. As everyone has multiple credit scores and some scores may not consider authorized user activity as representative of your trustworthiness as activity on an individual or joint account. For that reason, if you're looking to rebound from damaged credit or to see a big boost fast, you may want to open an account of your own. One of the credit scores that I was mentioning, FICO, FICO credit score, FICO 8 model, which is one of the credit scores that they use to determine your credit worthiness, that doesn't even incorporate authorized user activity. So when you're looking to buy a trade line and use that aged or seasoned information to help you, to benefit you, a lot of you are wasting your time because that's not even going to be used to determine your credit worthiness. Rather than spending $1,000 to acquire aged trade lines, it makes more sense to simply get a secured credit card worth the money you would have used and that I don't really talk about them or recommend them is because, I mean, these jewelry account uh, primaries, I mean, they're, they're trash banks. I mean, and when I mean trash banks, I mean banks that they're not a major bank, they're subprime. I mean, they, they lend to anybody. And a lot of the other lenders know this. So when they see something like that on your credit profile, they're kind of like, it's still, I mean, yes, it looks better than an AU, yes. 
but still it's kind of like, all right, my jeweler is all right, you know? Whereas if you were to go the other route and get the um, secured card like from City, yeah, you're gonna start out with a low limit and it's gonna be a secured card, but over time, that's gonna grow into an unsecured card with a higher limit and it's gonna be from a major bank and it's not gonna be a store card, it's gonna be a revolving line of credit, which that looks the best on your credit. In the video, you'll notice he said, um, you know, go to uh, Credit Strong, which Credit Strong's good too. It's pretty much self-lender, you know, Dr. Pepper, Mr. Pip kind of thing. They're just, you know, a different type of self-lender deal. Um, he suggested getting the $18,000 loan. And in, in my opinion, okay, yeah, that, that is good, but the only problem with that is most people can't afford the monthly payment that came with that. So it's like, if you can afford the monthly payment, then great. But again, the only, there's another problem or caveat with that, and that's you, it's only gonna help your credit after you've paid at least half of it off. So you gotta think, you're gonna be waiting, unless you've got the cash to just put down and knock it down real low, you're gonna be waiting a hot minute before that balance gets dropped to a level to where it actually helps. So basically, yeah, we have two aspects of credit repair. One is disputing all derogatory information on your credit report with credit cleaning letters or dispute letters. Second facet is basically getting a secured credit card that you fund with your own money. Essentially, you give the bank a deposit or as collateral in the event that you default on your payments, given that they are taking the risk of giving credit to you with your bad history. This allows you to begin building positive payment history as you dispute the derogatory or negative ones. This of course is most easily accessible to those who have bad credit, who otherwise would have been rejected or denied access to it. And after five to 18 months of consistent on-time payments, no payment delinquencies, the secured credit card becomes an unsecured credit card and you get your initial deposit back. Straightforward. Now, if you're in the States, America, the US of A, you have two good options. You can get the Discover It Secured Credit Card. Be the one and only the Discover It Secured Credit Card, baby. This has a $0 annual fee, which is huge, huge, when you're trying to build your credit because most cards charge annual fees because they're like, yeah, this guy doesn't have the best credit, so let's just kick him while he's down. I know, credit card companies are terrible, but another great thing about this card is you actually get 1% to 2% cash back on purchases, which is insane for a secured credit card. And to top that off, Discover will actually match your cash back during your first year which again is insane for a secured credit card. Then lastly, uh, this secured credit card only makes you put $200 towards it. So if you don't know what a secured credit card is, it's essentially you giving Discover $200 and saying, here's my $200. They're gonna say, okay, thank you. We're gonna give you a credit card that has a $200 limit on it. And then it acts like a normal credit card. You charge it, you make payments, you charge it, you make payments, and it's a normal credit card. Then when you actually close that account, Discover goes, hey, thanks for being a customer. Here's the $200 you gave us at the beginning. Take that back in your bank account. Or the Open Sky secured credit card. These guys at Open Sky know what's going on. They are awesome. They don't even pull a credit report to approve you for this card. I don't understand how that works, but they literally do not pull a credit report. So if you're like, I've got the worst credit scores on the face of the earth, you could still get approved for this card because they do not pull a report. Their job and their focus is to give you the tools to get your credit back on track. And I will say this card doesn't give you any cash back or any of those goodies or any of that stuff, but there's no annual fees in every single person that I've told to get one again has been approved. Now, again, this is a secured credit card, which means there is a minimum limit of $200. So you do have to put that money up front to get the card. But again, when you close the account, you get it back. Oh. And if you're Canadian, yeah, eh? <laughs> yeah, eh? My, my, my Canucks, we have the Home Trust Secured Visa. Number one, the Home Trust Secured Visa. This card comes in two different versions, a no annual fee card and a $59 annual fee card. The difference is that the annual fee card has a lower interest rate of 14.9% compared to 19.99%. But in my opinion, the annual fee card is irrelevant because if you can't afford to be paying your balance off in full, then you can't afford to pay any interest at all. Also, racking up a balance is probably how some people ruin their credit in the first place. It's kind. Really? If you want to use credit cards properly, you should pay them off in full so you don't get charged interest. Minimum security deposit for this card is $500, the highest on this list, and the maximum is $10,000. Approval rate for this card is over 95%. Only people currently in bankruptcy do not qualify. They must get discharged first. Or the Refresh Financial Secured Visa. Number two, the Refresh Financial Secured Visa. This card has guaranteed approval as long as you're the age of majority, have your security deposit, and don't have an existing or pending account with Refresh Financial. This card is the only card on this list that doesn't do credit checks. When applying 
for a new credit card, the issuer will do a hard inquiry, which will cost you some points to your credit score. With Refresh Financial, you won't take any hit to your credit score. The annual fee for this credit card is $12.95, but there is a $3 monthly fee on top of that. So really, it's $48.95 a year. Also, be aware that there is a $2 monthly inactive fee. So make sure you do at least one transaction a month to avoid this. The minimum security deposit for this card is $200, and the maximum is $10,000. And for my Londoners, you know, in Birmingham, Nottingham, Barking, all my people out there, UK, we have the Aqua Classic credit card. Number three, we have the Aqua Classic credit card. This one has a credit limit of £1,200, which is obviously much higher than the previous cards, which is obviously a bit nicer to have a more flexible credit limit to buy things that you need. Obviously, if you've got a car repair coming up, this might actually exceed £500, and therefore it's nicer to have a bigger credit limit to be able to afford to pay this amount. They also accept people that have bad credit. This is obviously worse than having no credit and is when your score is below 450. This is really good because if you've missed a payment or two, they'll give you the opportunity to repair your credit history and prove that you're a reliable spender. For this card, you also don't need to have any minimum income and it also doesn't matter what current bank account you have. This credit card isn't limited for students and is available for everyone as long as you're over the age of 18. And number two. Or the Barclay Forward credit card as our best credit card for beginners is the Barclay Card Forward credit card. This credit card has a £1,200 credit limit, which is obviously slightly lower than the past credit card, but it does have a whopping three months of 0% interest or interest-free period. This means that obviously if you need to buy something that's quite pricey, like a sofa or a holiday, you can effectively pay for it over three months without incurring any interest. You can also have up to one CCJ, which is where you fail to make a payment because you didn't really want to, and the county court has actually judged you reliable to make this payment, otherwise they'll have bailiffs come and collect items from you up to that value. So this credit card is also great for people that have bad credit or that have made a mistake in the past and want to repair and fix their credit score. For this credit card, you do need to have a minimum income of £3,000 a year, which is also really quite low and lower than the previous example as well. These are either secured credit cards or ones that have no credit check that is easily accessible to those with bad credit or no credit. So if you have bad credit history, you either DIY yourself or hire a credit repair company to dispute derogatory uh, items on your credit report. Then you need to get a secured credit card or just one that accepts people with bad credit so that you can start building a positive payment history on your credit report. And if you currently have a credit card and are in a mountain of debt, you know, the, the minimum uh, payment required has become too high or is basically just covering the interest, you might want to uh, take on a debt settlement approach to get out of debt. It'll affect your credit score, but the main thing right now is to get out of debt. So if you have a $5,000 credit card as maxed out and you don't have any substantial income coming in to pay it off, your best bet is a debt settlement approach. And you need to purchase, negotiate, and sell your debts by Mandy Agridge, $20, to get you out of debt within six months. That $5,000 credit card balance could be settled for as low as $2,500. And she details how to do it. Again, remember I told y'all, I, I had $12,000 of credit card debt. I've been heavy in the game. I've been heavy in the game. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> you know, I do, I guess sometimes the best people to learn from are those who mess up the most. But of course, this is all at an affordable and feasible price. I'm not overcharging people. No shots fired. That is my review. Uh, the OnlyFans content in itself. I give it a B minus. Mm, that's kind of generous. I give it a C plus. C plus. I think that, that is a solid answer. C plus. It's funny, you know, the content on his YouTube is longer than all the videos on the OnlyFans. I feel like the content on OnlyFans would be more detailed, more like be longer form. There's no, there's, there's barely any videos on the OnlyFans of the more than 10 minutes. That's all I'm gonna say. But you know on his uh, <laughs> YouTube, it's 10 minutes plus, so I don't know. But yo, while you lot are here, yeah, watch my past video right here on how to live in Airbnbs and rent with bad credit or an eviction on your record. Watch that video right here. Or watch my other video right here on how you can reduce your utility bills, gas, electricity, water, hydro, heating, AC, substantially upwards of 50% by following a couple unknown and uncommon things. Watch that video right here or watch my other video right here on how you can start making some passive income on YouTube by recording and editing reaction style videos. I got you. And as always, if it doesn't feed you, don't water it.
and too much of any good thing is good for nothing. How are you lot doing today? Stay with me. I'm doing more, saying less, and keeping that same energy. No cap. Flip the script. I'm out. Deuces. Stuck in my dream, yes Cause I've seen the highs, I've seen the lows I've seen the fiends I've got old friends on my line, they hit on my phone I'm even on scene I remember when they never tried Now they fucking with me I remember when they never tried I'm Stuck in my dream, yes Cause I'm stuck in my dream Got girls in the whip and he sing my songs I got money on my mind till it's gone Never cried too long, can't man stay strong